If you've seen any stories about lawsuits involving the state and the governor during this pandemic, the odds are my next guest had a hand in them. Harmeet Dillon is an attorney and a Republican committee woman who has crusaded against the state's coronavirus restrictions on behalf of churches and parents and more. Here's our conversation. So, uh, Harmi, you and the uh, Center for American Liberty have, of course, filed a number of lawsuits against uh, the state, against Governor Newsom during this pandemic. One of the most recent ones, which in fact includes uh, La Jolla uh, family, has to do with uh, schooling and the governor's mandate saying that the majority of our schools essentially must go online only if there's a ton of coronavirus in the respective county. So, in your suit, you say the governor has put politics ahead of the well-being of children. Why do you say that? Well, you use the term a ton of COVID, and I respectfully disagree with that. Uh, when you're talking about a, uh, a county like Los Angeles County, for example, or San Diego County, a larger county, you can't compare some of the smaller towns and some of the more rural areas to the city. Uh, that would be a false comparison. We have individual school districts that are the closest to the ground have the best grasp on what the community situation is there and what the uh, safety preparations that have been made. And so we believe that like most decisions, this decision should be made at the local level. And uh, these are elected officials who are accountable to the people who elected them. And they are often parents, like many of our uh, school uh, board members are parents and they care about their own children. And so for the governor to substitute his judgment is, is, is wrong. But when you actually drill down, something that I did not know until I really did, dug into this lawsuit is a lot of our schools today in Southern California and Northern California are going to be used as childcare facilities during this pandemic. So they're going to be going to these facilities and using these facilities with other children and with adult supervision, these supervision to do their remote learning and homework. What's missing? The teachers. So the teachers are the ones who through their union do not want to participate. But Harmi, isn't there an example, or at least in San Diego, I mean, I, I think that some people would say that some of the school districts weren't capable of handling it, or at least were hoping and reaching out for more specifics from at least the state level. Well, that could very well be that it's on the governor. I think the governor has been under pressure from the teachers union for months, and the teachers union's demands in, in, in our state have included defunding the police, Medicare for all, a number of political agendas that have zero to do with how do we educate our children. Education of our children in California is not optional. It is part of our California constitution. And there are numerous federal constitutional cases as well that describe the right to education as fundamental. Brown versus Board of Education is such a case that says that it is simply not an option to provide inferior education to people on the basis of their skin color or where they live. And so Danny, what's going to happen with this situation is that rich people will be able to hire tutors, have education pods, and be able to educate their children. What about the middle class people? What about the single parent households? What about the mom who has to decide between her job and babysitting her child and helping the child with homework, which is not something she's trained in? This is what the governor hasn't thought through. Harmeet, I want to switch gears a second to uh, churches and places of worship. You ha your, your firm has represented uh, some places of worship here in San Diego over the course of the pandemic. Recently in San Diego, and actually across the state, we've seen some churches uh, openly defy uh, county and state public health orders, hold mass gatherings without masks, close together. Is that the right approach in your mind? Well, so there's two aspects of that. Number one, I don't support that. And none of our cases have been on behalf of congregations that refuse to follow generally accepted medical guidelines. And I know the masks are very controversial. I come from a family with a lot of doctors in it. And you know, my conclusion and takeaway is I really hate wearing the mask, but I hate dying more than that. And if we can cut down the risk, I think that's a reasonable trade-off for me. But when you talk about um, churches, the uncomfortable part of that is the state dictating to these places of worship, how they operate. It is not a, uh, you know, a laundromat. It is not a Costco. It is not a restaurant. It is not generally regulated by the state. And one of the reasons we filed suit in these cases is not over the substantive restrictions of mask and, and, and social distancing, because our clients actually wanted to do those things. It's that the state had looser restrictions for commercial business endeavors and entities than it did 
for churches. That's unconstitutional. And in my opinion, if you're allowed to go to a Costco and there's no limit of 25% occupancy like they have for churches, that's unconstitutional. What's interesting is that right now San Diego is is having this battle uh, about enforcement. You know, they're talking about gyms shutting down, restaurants shutting them down. Um, but when it comes to places of worship, uh, the main thing we've seen from at least the county level have been basically strong letters of anger and frustration. So I want you to put on your uh, both legal and political hat for a second, if you don't mind. Uh, do you think local governments, police chiefs, sheriffs, uh, do you think they're nervous politically or legally about enforcing these regulations when it comes to places of worship? Um, I think most law enforcement officers did not go into law enforcement to go into temples and churches and bust them. I think many law enforcement, you know, they're, they're, they kind of mirror the population or maybe slightly more conservative than the population. They're not really comfortable doing that. It's not their job to be the nanny. It's their job to break up crimes and arrest people and keep people safe. So I think it's kind of unfair to put that on the cops. And indeed, as you have seen in many counties, they have refused to do that. In Sonoma County, where I spent some time, the sheriff has said, I find a lot of these decrees to be unconstitutional and, and government overreach. You can definitely tell people they should do this, they should do that. You can close the beaches, you can close certain things, but at the end of the day, they didn't go into policing and law enforcement to do that. Harmi Dillon, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Stay healthy and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Danny. Straight ahead on Politically Speaking, will a Californian be on the Democratic presidential ticket this year? We break down this week's big anticipated announcement with one of our favorite political analysts. Stay with us.